In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at multiple severe weather events, multiple coastal storms, and a major snow event that is ongoing right now. Now, now you might see that my environment looks a little bit different. I am at my girlfriend's house, which is pretty far from my house. So I'm in a different place. The audio might also sound a little janky, but nevertheless, we're going to make a full blown video right now uh, with the resources that we have available to us, which is a dining room table set right here. Uh, just my internal microphone and my computer. And we're going to just do it the way that we always do it. You might see I got a haircut and uh, my beard done a little bit. Uh, that's been a long time in the making. I've seen all the comments about how crazy my hair was and it was crazy. Um, there were so many comments. I never expected people to really care about something like that. Um, a lot of you know what happened with my mom and all that. And she was my hairdresser. She has, nobody's ever cut my hair besides her. And I definitely didn't want to let anybody else do it on account of this. I wanted to keep the tradition alive. So I waited until she was ready to cut my hair again. And she did, and she did a great job. And I'm definitely glad that I held out. So that is why things got so crazy. Let's dive into things though, and take a look here. We do have have this kind of coastal storm. It was a doozy. Uh, I'm down in the Outer Banks, actually. That's where my girlfriend lives and it's beautiful down here and we got that coastal storm really bad it's kind of cool to get to come down here and see a different kind of perspective uh, from these storms and you can see that uh, currently it's located the low that is near New Jersey we have heavy snowfall going on for New York and New England it's actually overperformed quite a bit um, so we are seeing a little bit of a bigger storm there than originally anticipated uh, as far as snowfall is concerned and as we head towards tomorrow afternoon, we see all of this nasty weather is going to be, for the most part, already moved out. Uh, we get very clear con conditions here, and I would say the east is actually the nicest weather around the nation uh, starting as soon as tomorrow, which is kind of hard to believe, because everywhere in the central states and the western states here is dealing with massive storminess. Look at all these lows. We have 1,003 in Southern California. 1,000 millibar between Idaho and Montana, and then a 990 between Colorado and Kansas. So certainly very, very active out west. And we're seeing heavy rainfall along the western seaboard here. Uh, we're seeing heavy thunderstorms here for the central plains, and we are seeing heavy snowfall here for the both the Rockies and the northern plains into the upper Midwest. So definitely a very, very active pattern out west. By the time we reach Monday, we see that all of this is going to start its long trek towards the east. We have a 991 between Minnesota and Iowa. We have a 999 there between Arkansas and Louisiana. And we have heavy snowfall for the upper Midwest still occurring just to the north of this stronger primary low. And to the south of it, we have a cold front building in. And this is for states like Missouri, Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana. We are seeing heavy, heavy thunderstorms in that area as well as potential severe weather. As we reach towards Tuesday... What we end up seeing is a 995 over Minnesota and Wisconsin. We see thunderstorms building in for the Ohio Valley into the deeper south here. Still, that severe weather threat is present. And we can really see that the cold air is making its way in behind this cold front. And the warm air is surging to the north. And you guys have heard me say this time and time again. But this is the ingredients for a severe weather setup. This cold air moving in, sweeping underneath, and this warm air surging to the north. It's this area that you want to watch where that cold is hitting the warmth from the side. That's when that cold and dry interacts with the warm and humid. And that just creates a lot of instability uh, oftentimes, and including this time it is what's expected to happen. By the time we reach Wednesday afternoon, a lot of this storminess will now be located over the eastern seaboard. This particular model has as things dying down by the time it reaches the east coast we see some lighter showers for the mid-atlantic in the southeast a little bit heavier there in the northeast i think thunderstorms will be a possibility but it does appear like this storm will be less intense by the time it reaches the coast which is pretty common so i have to think that this is a realistic scenario what is interesting though by thursday on the 28th we have a low trying to form near the south carolina coast and we're starting to see another coastal storm unfold here in the east also we have more storms moving on shore to the northwest with snowfall in the northern rockies cascades and sierra nevada there and what we're going to see happen is that this coastal storm really really gets going uh and overnight uh, thursday into friday we have a 997 offshore of the outer banks exactly where i'm at and what we see is thunderstorms heavier showers and probably strong winds for south carolina north carolina virginia 
Delmarva especially. The impacts get lighter the further away you move from this low, so we would expect eastern North Carolina to be feeling the brunt of it by this point. Uh, surrounding areas getting some pretty major impacts, and then areas like New Jersey and southern New England here, probably a little less wind, a little less heavy rainfall because you're further away from that low. And this low does move sort of closer to the northeast, but it wants to take a track kind of like this, where it wants to kind of turn around. This is pretty far out and things like this could change and we could see it like to ride up the coast a little bit more so there is some kind of uncertainty in that area but if it does do this kind of recurvature offshore we would likely only get kind of some moderate rainfall moderate winds in the northeast kind of sparing you guys from those more major impacts in that type of a scenario let's take a look at the kind of afternoon of saturday on the 30th this will be the day before uh, uh, Easter. We see the southwest. We're seeing 1,001 millibar low pressure center near the Sierra Nevada. And we're seeing heavier snowfall for these areas. Also, the southern Rockies in the four corner states and rainfall in the lower elevation and coastal areas. We do have 1,004 over Iowa here by this point as well, causing some rainfall and snowfall depending on where you're at. Let's move this towards Easter. And for the day on Easter, I do have some good news and bad news here. For one thing, that I do expect the Northwest and overall the entire West Coast to be drier and warmer. So that goes for Washington, Oregon, and California here. Um, the nasty weather is going to be located over the central states here. We see 1,002 near the Texas Panhandle, causing snowfall for the Southern Rockies in through some of the kind of central slash northern plains for Nebraska and South Dakota there. And then we see some thunderstorm and showery activity here to the east. That'll be for Kansas, Iowa, Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas, and Louisiana there. Another area that could experience some good weather is going to be your southeast and mid-Atlantic here where we do see this kind of push of warm air combined with pretty dry conditions is going to allow for a drier day for most areas and warmer day, which oftentimes you might notice that the warm air moves in and storms move in with it. It's pretty rare this time of year to see that nice weather come in and not feature uh, the storm. So we could get lucky here on Easter. It's still 210 hours out, but I definitely think that this is a promising look for the West and East Coast especially here. So again, that West Coast and then the Eastern Seaboard are looking very nice. The areas in between, not quite as much. Now, let's take this one more day. We do get to April 1st here, <clears throat> April Fool's Day, although I will say nothing is a joke about this. 995 over Michigan. Thunderstorms moving into a lot of the more eastern states like the Ohio Valley and the deeper south and surrounding areas. The west and central states getting a little bit nicer by this point as this high pressure system builds. For the four corner states, we could start off April on a really good note for the western half of the nation as that nasty weather is starting to impact now the more eastern half by April 1st. There's our daily emojis. Let's dive into the GFS model and see what this one agrees or disagrees on. We get this big kind of storm crossing the nation, and I think the biggest thing here is we saw weaker showers, maybe sprinkles on the East Coast on the European model. This one, we're seeing much heavier conditions for Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia, where we could get some thunderstorms rolling through overnight Wednesday into Thursday. That's the 27th into the 28th coming up just later next week, kind of the mid to late point next week. We do see that low form, but it really doesn't ride up or impact the coast at all on this one. So we get the stronger cold front impacts here, but that low never really takes place like we saw the European model show. So some pretty big differences there. By the time we are reaching uh, April 2nd here, we get a little bit less activity for the majority of the end of March here on this GFS model. But by April 2nd, we do see a low forming for Illinois, cold front underneath, warm front out ahead. So we get this warmer, more wet weather in the east with potentially some thunderstorms trying to form here for Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Missouri, Tennessee, and Mississippi there on the first into the second. By the time we're taking a look at the third, what we see is 1,002 still over Kentucky or southern Illinois there. Some thunderstorms out ahead of it for the southeast corner of the nation. Let's keep going here. And we see that one move offshore and we get another major storm trying to take place across the southeast. Take this one with a grain of salt. April 8th, we get a severe Arctic blast clearly as we're seeing a pretty major snowstorm for the Ohio Valley and Northeast here. Don't think this is going to happen. Anything is a possibility that these models are showing. 
but this is getting a little ridiculous here. Could definitely happen, I guess, hypothetically, but you know, 384 hours out, this model is showing this. I really, really don't feel too strongly that this is gonna end up happening. So don't pay too much mind to that. Total precipitation is looking crazy. We see the West Coast featuring a lot here. The central states dealing with a lot, even the four corner states and Rockies as well. And then the Eastern seaboard potentially seeing the most here from Florida all the way up through Maine as we get a multitude of coastal storms, cold fronts, different lows trying to form at different points, gonna be an active one for the Eastern seaboard. And really, as you can see, a majority of the nation here. All right, now as we move into the total snowfall here, what we end up seeing is plenty for the mountainous west, feet and feet and feet of snowfall. One to two feet here for the northern plains into the upper Midwest, and one to two or three feet here for the northeast and New England, as we have a heavy snowfall event ongoing and potentially more snowfall down the road. This seems pretty realistic to me. These are the areas that you expect to see snow lingering into late March and April, so I'm not really thinking this is anything too wild there. GFS model is in high agreement here. We see uh, just a lot out west, one to two feet for the upper Midwest. And then again, that one to maybe two or three feet here for the Northeast over the course of the next 15 days, nothing too crazy. Now the temperature pattern is really where things get interesting. And this is the driving force behind a lot of what we're seeing. We see these cold air masses really frequently moving in and the warm air really frequently surging out ahead of it. So what this does is causes a lot of instability in these areas and storminess as a result. That's right now. As we move on, the cold air sets in, but then we see this surge of warmth again with cold air building in behind. Look at how quickly. This is just by Tuesday, just like three or four days from now. We see surging warmth across those more Ohio Valley states, a low taking place near Iowa with a cold front underneath, and this would be another severe weather threat. So we see this again, and let's see how long it takes. Cold establishes itself in the east, but look at that surging warmth already trying to make a comeback. The colder air starts to make some progress on it. And we see kind of just repeatedly this warm air take place ahead of the cold. I mean, this is the fourth or fifth time on this model run. We're seeing warmth surging, cold air moving in uh, from the side. This would cause thunderstorm or severe weather events almost every time we see something like this. So keep that in mind. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. We do upload mostly every single day. So be sure to subscribe for those uh, notifications, or not notifications, but to see it popping up in your subscription box and everything. You can hit the bell icon, though, for notifications when we do upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.